and receiving public comment. Um, you have an opportunity where you could, if you'd like to say, make a statement you can now, or if you want to wait until a topic comes up, you can speak on the topic. Um, this is a, a committee, so it's a little more loose than the regular board meetings. Um, because it is a Brown Act meeting, there can't be interaction. Uh, you can make a statement on the topic if you would like, but ultimately we still are held to the Brown Act. Just so everyone understands, this committee does not make any decisions. This committee is just trying to listen to all parties, look at all the information we have, and then uh, make recommendations to the full board. The full board is the one who will ultimately make the decision. All right. So at this time, if anyone would like to make a public comment. Um, Mo Cajone, I'm with the uh, Mount House Sports Incorporation. Um, 501c3 registered uh, Mount House nonprofit. Uh, had a few talking points, um, but I didn't know if it was going to be like the three minute thing, so I kind of wanted to condense things really quick. But so I'll just keep it brief. It's a loose three minutes, yeah. So I'll keep it brief. So um, we had, we've been discussing things, we're trying to kick off our season. So our, our major concern is um, are we the community, residents, taxpayers of Mount House are going to be able to utilize the high school field? That, that's our main concern. Meaning for after the, after the stadium's done, we don't need it like from now to like August. It means like in September. Our season starts in September. So we need to start planning for our home games, which is four home games in total. Uh, we have five levels at play. Um, so that's what we were actually looking at. We understand the, the reasoning of the fees the tiers that are being proposed, we understand. We have no issues. We know that we have to pay. So it doesn't matter if we go anywhere else, we still gotta pay, so we don't, we don't really care. What we care about is being able to play at our home stadium, representing Mountain House. This is our home, this is where we belong. We've heard a lot of rumors uh, for you know, poor, uh, we've had a lot of poor communications, a lot of rumors saying, we're going to be able to play here, we're not going to be able to play here. So, we're here to get answers. You know, if we're going to be able to play here or not, I don't know if it'll be addressed today, but hopefully in the f near future, we can get answers that hopefully the board can take into consideration and, uh, you know, give us a, just give us some answers. Uh, we contacted Tracy Unified because uh, we started already uh, looking at other things because, because of rumors. So we got a hold of Tracy Unified. Tracy Unified said they will not be able to accommodate us. They said they have eight football programs, counting their youth programs, and that's all they can handle with three fields. They got, three, they got their high school teams, including Millennium, and they got four youth, youth football um, programs. So. That's, they, that's what they're accommodating. So we have nowhere, we're hopefully that we can play here at our own home, representing Mount House, get some life into our community, you know, bring some excitement to us. Uh, we've been waiting for this for a long time. A lot of us been here uh, 2003, 2004. A lot of broken promises, you know. We all, we all know how that goes. We all, we all know how it's been. When I bought here, they told us the high school would be done in 2009. It's 2014. So we've been around. We've been committed to the community, and hopefully the community, and hopefully the school district will be committed back to us. Um, and the one thing we want to get rid of is the us against you mentality. You know, we, we understand that there needs to be a process built. We understand there needs to be fees. We understand. All we want, give us a process, let us know how much it's gonna be, and let's play football. So that's, that's basically, that's the answers we, we hopefully get from you um, in the near future, and, um, and that's our major concerns. Okay. Um, just so everyone's aware, the meeting today is specifically to talk about field use for the K-8 fields. The next meeting that we have, which is going to be on June 4th, is specifically about high school use and high school fields. I would like to say something. Sure. Okay. 
So uh, we also represent Mount Top East basketball uh, too as well. This program has done a lot for our community, period. And we feel that you know, sitting in the last meeting and talking about having to pay up front, what, how that would impact this is means that we would have to pay for our entire season up front, which means to reserve practice courts inside the K through eight facilities, game times, we'd have to pay for that in advance. Now, we've never had a problem paying our bills. Uh, we don't have that issue. Um, there is some discrepancy of what tiers we would have, that group would have fallen into, but I think that would be rectified, rectified with what you guys are doing here. Um, so, you know, obviously that's a concern. The other concern is to be able to, to lock up the fields or lock up the basketball courts and, you know, not to be, have our parents displaced. So, if, in other words, if we reserved a date, we were getting kicked out of dates many, many times throughout the season. So then the parents get upset and, you know, it just kind of generally looks bad for you guys and looks bad for us. So whatever policy you guys put in place, we want to work within those guidelines to reserve the, the courts, but to be able to, to have to pay on a July 1st deadline for the entire basketball season may not be as practical, practical as paying for like a football field. A football field, we know it's four games, we know these particular dates, that's fine. Um, and then lastly, I think the last point for, for as far as our entire organization is concerned is you know, using the practice fields at the, at the junior, at the middle schools, safety is the main concern. So we've played there our games for the last two years, and it's been a miracle, really, that we've had seasons. And, you know, the ground is hard. It's not set for actual game activity. Um, during practice is a little different. We minimize kids going to the ground. And, you know, so, you know, we realize that the funds that we pay, we'd also like to see that the fields themselves, we could make the fields usable for everybody that, that uses them. You know, um, you know, there's been sprinkler issues out there and created swamps. We actually call it the quest of swamps, uh, which was really, really a detriment to, uh, the, to, to not only us, but during recess, the kids are having to go walk through these, these huge swamps around, you know, 15 yards around each sprinkler head. And, you know, not, not being able to touch that and work on it, um, because of you know policies, we didn't want to go and do anything like that. Uh, but you know, bringing it to the attention of this, to to the custodians and stuff there, there isn't a lot that they could do budget-wise and stuff. So, you know, looking to use the games this year. Obviously, we would like to keep the revenue that we're spending for these football games right here at Mountain House. That's money that could go right into the into the budget or you know from us into the organization. Um, so, you know, we don't want to go to Tracy. We certainly don't want to go to San Jose to play our football games uh, with our parents. Uh, it would be free to go all the way down there. But if we could just come up with a plan where this is going to work for everybody, I think the community will be really excited about it. It's going to benefit everybody. So, thanks. Uh, I'm Raphael. Since uh, no one's here for Mount Hospital, you got to go ahead and represent with them for them also, too. Going on top of what they were going on also, too. Forward in the years to come, hopefully the process that um, you may have as a board um, for paying fees and of that nature also go in tune with uh, Mount House Little League because what we have right now going on is now that we have a new board with the Little League, we have, you know, not really distrust, but we have a little bit of people being leery of what's going on and some of our kids are leaving. They're leaving the league, going to play at Tracy, they're going to play at travel ball teams. And we're trying to keep the community here, you know, basically as far as this part of it, this portion of the, the process for Little League would be very important that it goes straight through and in tune with you know, the rest of our youth, youth organizations. Um, that way, you know, we keep our kids here in town, keep our kids playing here in town. Thank you. Okay, moving on to um, the facilities use handbook review, uh, organizational placement, priority, and reservations. This was kind of carryover from, from last week. We seem to be running out of time as we yes. progress. Did send out a draft schedule. So you can probably review that. These are the, I made the changes that we discussed. <coughs> Moving government agencies along with youth groups and person. You know, the tier 2A, um, only charging fees for outside of the school, you know, outside the custodial hours. Um, so that's, that's something that's different that we, we've done in the past. Uh, we're, we're narrowing it down from a six tier level down to four tiers. 
um, when we're charging fair rental value for those that are private parties and obviously developers. Those that aren't associated with Lamarcks are going to school district at all. Um, we have all foundations, all school events in the first tier. So there's, again, no fees unless it's outside custodial hours. There's a minimum fee of two hours if it is outside school hours. Um, these are the rates at the top that Manteca currently charges. So there will be some savings for the organizations using this type of fee schedule. One of the things that are not on here are the high school usage, but that that will be something we will add on in the next facility. Yes. Any questions? Very good. That's good. Um, kind of follows the same thing. Yeah, this is first reading. Um, if we are comfortable with what we have in front of us here, to at least cover the existing facilities. Um, Athletic fields, that'll be the next decision to make on whether we want to make recommendations to charge for field usage. I did bring the fees that Manteca charges. We've been very close to using there, so that's something that we can talk about. Uh, item C is field usage. So this includes high school and elementary field usage. We'll hold the discussion on the high school until mm -hmm. next week. So you can see here, it just talks about athletic fields. It doesn't really pertain to high school or elementary there. That's a $10 fee, two hour minimum charged. That's not very expensive. So it's $10 an hour with a two hour minimum. So, yes, and then every hour after that is $5. So if someone wants to come in and use the field for three hours, you're looking at $25. Plus, if it's weekends, obviously there will not be any electrical. If by chance a custodian needs to come in, then there's a two-hour minimum for that. Very likely they will not need custodians to come in for a few weeks each. But the gates should be locked, right? Correct. Uh, the only piece that I think we can talk about is the restrooms. Restrooms. Yeah. Um, okay. So my recommendations would be to use the same fees that Manteca uses for their athletic fields, which is $10 an hour, two-hour minimum. So uh, Mr. Nolan, as far as maintenance concerns, I mean, <coughs> just from one of our speakers here, I, if we have sprinklers that aren't working, I mean, we need to get those fixed. I, I just don't want to see organizations taking upon themselves to go out there and try and make repairs, do lawn mowing, and for obviously for liability reasons, but also um, our fields our responsibility to maintain them and keep them upkept. By instituting this fee, do you feel that that would help with some of the maintenance issues that are going to be required by the, by using these fields? Well, anything will help. Uh, to the extent, that's another story. Uh, a going rate for a sprinkler repair is like $150. Uh, so, but anything will, will help offset our costs. Okay. Can I, can can I just comment that we no, would have let up? I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Uh, if, if I could, yeah, first, I apologize for returning this. Um, second, if I could, I remember at the last meeting we talked about wanting to find out what we were looking at as far as damage or, or work that we thought the usage might have to play into this. I mean, Yes, anything we charge is going to help, but anything we charge is just coming back from us anyway. I mean, it's our community that's paying for it. If if we're not seeing, if charging the fee is not going to help us get the repairs, and it's not going to help us maintain the fields better, why would we want to charge the fee? That that would be my main question. Is we're not if we're not going to get what kind of benefit are we going to get out of charging the fee? What are what are they going to see? What are we going to see as a result of it? Because I I would echo what Matt says. It shouldn't be up to this fee to repair our sprinklers. There are some things we need to fix. Them. So, so what what would be, what do you think would the benefit would be? What would, what would we be able to tell the public? This is what you're getting for the fees that we're paying. Well, maybe the sprinklers a bad example. But right. I, I mean, I'm just talking about just the general wear and tear. Right. Uh, and if that's, organizations are using the fields all weekend, every weekend, there's some. There, I mean, that's a, they're in a worse condition they would be if they didn't use them. So. If but is what we're charging going to make them better? That's my question. Is there something we would be able to do with this to help improve the condition of them as a result of the land? 
Well, and another piece is because this is going to be a standing committee, um, this is something that we can continue to reevaluate. Well, the hope is this will be a standing committee because that hasn't been approved yet. But that is something that the committee can review annually, quarterly, or, or whatever we decide is to take a look at the cost of the maintenance sure. and, and what we're collecting as far as fees. But I mean, we've been using Manteca as a model. Um, everything else kind of falls in line, and maybe it's a good start. And do we have the resources to really start monitoring this and bring back uh, true reports of the kind of wear and tear that we're having on the fields? Not at this time. Okay. Then I, if I could ask, it, what, what do you think we need to do to try to get these fields in the condition that they should be? It's not just Cuesta. Cuesta's got its issues. Wickland has its issues. Bethany has its issues. Lambertsville has its issues. We may not be able to fix everything, but it would be nice to maybe get a plan, goals set together to say, okay, we're charging these fees. Our first thing we're going to do with them is we're going to fix this. We're going to direct it this. So then again, I think everybody would appreciate to know we paid money. This is what it did. This is the result we saw. What could we get for them? And again, just to remind everybody, we're not in this to make a profit at all. Anything that we collect will go right back into the fields. And that's the goal, is to enhance the fields and make it, well, first and foremost, make it uh, in good condition for our students, but secondly, for the community. Well, what I would recommend, and uh, I don't know what was done in past practices, but, um, any and all fees that are collected should be put in a separate account, specifically marked for that purpose. Right now we just put all the money into a revenue account, which is called leases and rentals. So we could easily identify the amount of money that was collected, put it into a separate restricted account, and start using that to pay for upkeep. And that's a so good place to start. So as far as the actual figure, does, is there any uh, disagreement to try and just move forward with the recommendation from staff, or? For the elementary fields, I'm charging $10, $20 to our minimum, $5 for every hour after that. So $20 for the first two hours, five hours after? $5 for every hour. For every hour. And that's for? And that's non-use of restaurant facilities. This is elementary athletic field. My feeling is to make the recommendation for that um, and then continue to evaluate it. And I, mean, I think also moving forward, we're going to have to come up with, well, my hope is that we'll come up with you know, direction to staff to go out and, and give us a, a true survey of the fields, tell us what's needed and, and what we can do to get them up and bring them up to stand and up to par. Your thoughts? And right right now we haven't been, up to now we haven't charged anything for fields. We have to use for fields. I don't think. It, does, it doesn't sound like a lot of money. When you put it in the terms of $25 for three hours, it doesn't sound like a lot of money. But I can appreciate when you're talking about, okay, well, over the course of the entire season, we're not talking about $25. And we're not just talking about one field. If we're Mountain House Little League, we're talking about four fields. So now it's $200 potentially for a weekend. And I, I again, I just, I wonder, if I'm on the other side and I'm writing a check for this, I'm wondering what am I getting for my money. And that's, that's really, I think, if we're going to approve fees, I'd like to try to see a plan with it to say, okay, with these fees, this is going to be our focus for this year. Maybe that's not something we can do now. But well, I, I mean, I think that ought, that needs to come with the recommendation. I think that first and foremost, <coughs> we start collecting money. We allocate it specifically for that use to improve the fields, and then we figure out how much it's going to cost us and come up with a timeline and start using money towards that goal of improving the fields. Um, and if we get to a point where Hey, we've made all the improvements, everything's in mid condition, then we can come back and reevaluate. Do we need to keep continuing this fee? But 
when <clears throat> when those sprinkler heads do get broken and uh, you know because of use on the weekends which if we get a better system in place like we discussed at prior meetings where custodians can go out on Friday afternoon evaluate the way things look and come back on Monday morning and take a look at the way things look and say this happened over the weekend we need to use that fund to replace it so I think it's a good starting point do we know what in comparison in comparing these fees do we know what are we talking about similar types of fields? I'm not sure. I don't. We, we have pretty sparse facilities as far as that goes. I mean, 99 percent it's grass with some amount of dirt for the baseball. But I mean, for I, flag football and regular football, you're just talking grass. You know, and, and if they've got additional facilities that they're maintaining, if it's multiple ball fields and dirt in fields and backstops that they're also maintaining, there's an additional cost there that I don't. I'm just looking at 25 bucks to to rake grass for. Three well, I mean, I can, give you an, I can give you an example. Um, I know the first year of Mountain House Little League, uh, the president of the league went and used league money and they put new dirt in all the fields and they went out and cut the grass and did all this stuff and it was like, well, the amount of money that they spent, I'm sure it doesn't come close to that, the fees that they were doing. So this is something that, it's, it's long term, it's long range, but we will go out and be able to maintain those fields feels the law and all of it. and it's a, it's a community effort, it's a team effort, everyone has to, everyone contributes, and, and I mean that's been my goal all along, is we need a fair consistent policy among that's all the organizations. Would it be reasonable to propose an alternative where we could have a field day where organizations that use the fields in partnership with the school district can come in and do some of the work together, monitored and managed by us so that we could say, you know, hey, instead of fees or in, instead of the full fees, we can do something in partnership with them where we're sharing costs, we're sharing resources, we're sharing people. Because I gotta think that it'll be a lot easier to get that than it's gonna be, again, for some of these organizations. This, I'm specifically thinking, and it's not so much football because it's really just one facility and one field. It's soccer and baseball using multiple fields, multiple hours, all weekend long for months. If we could find a way I think it's a recipe for disaster. I think that uh, you're going to have certain leagues that contribute more than others. The whole the whole point of this was to have a fair, sure. and equitable process, and I think that someone will be taken advantage of. Someone will, you know, it, and I'd love to hear what legal would have to say, but I can't imagine. Well, and that's what the liability. It's not just us to be able to decide something like that too clearly. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you know, but, but they do those things all the time when there's a classroom cleaning day. Are they going to? A wall? Are they going to do? You know, it's not necessarily full blown construction, but it's little projects for school improvement that I know you can get community assistance. In. Um, I, th I think we need to charge a reasonable fee for the usage of the fields. I agree with you that, and I don't know that this is unreasonable. I just don't. I only suggest this because everything that we've looked at as far as yeah. it seems to be in line. And I mean, I've been on some of their, at some of their sites, and I think, yeah, I think it's, 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 it's on, I, I think we, yeah, we have better facilities than they do. That's what I'm scary. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 can, I'll, I concur with the recommendation we have to charge something, I don't think this is unreasonable, I just do like that. If we could find alternatives within this that we can try to reach out for say for the people in the district and stuff, I'd like to see if there's additional things we can do because in the end this just comes from the same pockets of folks who've been donating other stuff too. It's all just coming from us anyway. If there's a way we can reduce that. I'd like to see us try, but I I, I do for the well, most part I for think the most part twenty five bucks for three hours isn't it's not that bad. Really. It's it's eight bucks for an hour. If you're using you know the entire baseball field you've got four games going on in those three hours or three games, depending. Well, if you look, I think the first, off the top of my head, I believe the first organization was 2008. So we've had from 2008 to 2014 with zero maintenance, yeah. no fees. So increases to the fees that we're already charging. Right. So I, I think it's, I think based on that, this is very reasonable. And like I said, start collecting money, start making improvements, and when we get to a point where the fields are in better condition, 
then we can come back and reevaluate if that fee's too high. But um, let me open it up on this specific issue about the, the discussion we're having about this fee of ten dollars per hour, minimum two hours, with five dollars every hour after. Uh, if there would like to be public comment on that, uh, if you keep it brief, because we are really running the time issues. If anyone would like to speak on that, please go ahead. Can I just first ask you to introduce the two other people here to, for us who have not been to the other oh, Sure, yeah. Uh, Alvina Kaiser, she's our CBO chief business official, and Jim Nolan, who's our director of maintenance operations transportation. Thank you. I do think the fee, um, it does sound like a lot, and um, with experience with basketball, gyms, and usage, there's you know, a lot of fees out there for our nonprofits and for our children. But I do agree that um, some organizations like Little League, when you, you know, from 2008, whatever was um, spent back then, Mountain House has grown considerably, and the amount of kids now that are playing sports in Mountain House, um, when you talk Little League and how many teams and five nights a week practice, it will add up very fast. So I do think I agree in that thing that it is reasonable, it sounds reasonable, but for different organizations, it could be very difficult that it could stop our kids from, from playing here in Mountain House and going outside of Mountain House. Okay, thank you. Um, in the process of uh, looking at those fees, as she was saying on top of what she was saying that you know, depending on which league it is, you probably want to look at the ratio, what they're, what they're using, you know, how long they're using those fields, and probably before the season even starts, there should be some kind of projection of how much they're going to pay. They're not going to be paying, you know, all right, this week you use it this many times, how much you're going to pay, all right, this week. Probably at the beginning of the season, they'll say, okay, this is Mount House Little League or whoever, Mount House, whoever, this is your projected fee for your season. And that's uh, prior meetings. That was discussion was paying. Uh, if you're when you reserve it, you pay up front. That's been the discussion. That's going to uh, that's going to be our recommendation to the board. So we reserve it for the season, saying that we're going to use it for that week, so that we pay up front for the yes. And with that, by, um, yeah, pay by month. Pay by month. It's going to be required to pay for the whole year. Pay by month. Rather pay the month after or pay the month after you use it. Yeah. Pay one month at a time before you use it. Part of that intent was to make sure things like you getting kicked out of a facility after reserving it don't happen. You've reserved it, you paid for it. Yeah. There's got to be some recognition. You paid for it, you get to be the one to use it. So. I just was going to say before, I didn't know I could speak before at that time, but I would say we would have gladly paid at the time the $150 per sprinkler out of our organization's pocket to fix that. But we just really felt kind of helpless at the time. We didn't know who to contact. We were talking to the custodian, and they were, you know, he's like, well, you could put some sand down. You could, you know, so we, we just, we would gladly have paid for that from our organization to, to be able to, you know, provide it for the kids. Understood. And at our first meeting, the discussion that we had was this committee, the proposal that we're going to make is that it be a standing committee. So when there's issues like that, organizations can come before the committee. We can take the statement, do some research, and take a recommendation to the full board, and uh, even with staff you know, staff direction, in your case, get the spring fixed Thank now. You. So we can, that, that's the hope that we, by having a standing committee, we can meet often with organizations to do that. And is there gonna be a, a monthly fee? Because uh, here's, the, here's one of the dilemmas with that. So you have, um, you know, the $10 an hour, the $25 for three hours, but what about the weekend? You know, you got Saturday games, and that's all day. So is that gonna be just a, a flat fee for the day? So, and, and, so here's what I'm saying. It's gonna add up very quickly for some organizations like Little League, like soccer, that, I'm just looking out for them, because that I can see a major, major dilemma with that fees that's going to be kind of the figures so and and if we go back to you know the field you know the fields that were they're paying to use hopefully the fields are aerated you know the sprinklers are work because those fields are hard 
Uh, they, they probably haven't been aerated in probably years since, probably haven't been aerated since they've been put down. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of things, and if these, if, if our organizations are paying for these fees like that, and paying for these fields, you know, it, that's kind of like my point. My point is, hopefully we're getting back what we're putting in. That's a discussion that we're, I mean, this can't be a, a discussion, but yeah. to answer those questions, absolutely, that's mm -hmm. the whole point of this, is to make sure that we have better facilities. And the only way it's gonna happen, because they're being used so often, so mm -hmm. it'll benefit you, it'll benefit the school, um, the fees that you pay will go right back into those fields. Mm -hmm. Nothing else, that's what it's for. We're not making a profit, we're simply trying to make improvements yeah. to existing. And we don't, you know, we know we have to pay, and we're okay with it. It's just that I'm just looking at these other guys because they have a lot more kids involved and they utilize more fields. So that's, that's I'm kind of, you yeah, know, the benefit to having hopefully you take that into consideration for them. We're coming up with the, the fees. And like I said, the, the other reason to have that standing committee is there's also accountability. Yes. You get to come back to us and say, hey, we paid this. We haven't seen that it provides an opportunity on both sides. To all maybe, maybe there's a cap for them. Like when they hit a certain dollar amount, you know, I, I just proposed that. Just put that out there. Maybe at, at a thousand hours or some cap number, they're done. So just think about that. Maybe. I have a quick question. It's probably going to mention the The fees you're collecting, the district's collecting, it's going into a separate fund specific to that field or just specific to facilities overall? It's just going into a, a revenue account, but at this point from here on, we will keep those funds separate and likely discuss what expenses are coming from that account so it's seen with the eye, especially so, now if we begin to start this July 1. Is there, um, is there going to be some sort of enhanced schedule for field maintenance at this point if the revenue is being collected going towards it? There, yeah, that, that's the goal. Again, like I said in the beginning, is everything has to go before the board, but that, I believe, would be our recommendation is that, yeah, when we start collecting some funds, that we come up with a plan as how how we're going to maintain this, the improvements that need to be done. Um, that'll be, you know, maintenance operations, transportation to go out and do that. Take a survey, what, you know, where we're at, what we need, where we're going to go, how much it's going to cost, and start putting pens on the map. Yeah, what, what we're going to get, what we need to do, what it's going to cost, so we can start making plans. Okay, it's hard to make plans of what you're going to spend before you know what you have to spend. So, what we're going to gather, we'll have that with the July 1st and the, the paying in advance, and okay, this is what we got, this is what we need to do, let's make a plan. Hopefully, start seeing those. So, we're good on fields. Uh, and we cut that. Make a recommendation to, yeah. to, to yes. suggest that and that to the board. So, the current, yeah, the current fee schedule. I um, need a look. Um, because I still would like, as all this stuff, I'd like to bring it to the board as one complete package. Okay. So, a few more weeks, and okay. then we can. Bundle everything and take the board so it's one discussion with recommendations. So, any other public comment before we close out? Can I just verify you're going to be talking about high school fees on June 4th? Is that going to mean it? Correct. And that open again? Yes. Um, on June 4th, we're going to have the high school principal here, and we're going to talk about. Uh, using the facility and using the fields. That's going to be kind of a, we knew it would be a larger discussion, so we have a meeting specifically for that. And then we better have that. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be important. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, any other comments? Any other and then the following week on June 11th, the meeting is going to specifically be around kitchen use. That's been an issue in the past. Um, no, that's not a board night. We talked about that ahead of time. Yeah. Thank you. Wednesday nights are fine. Is that? Okay. June 11th is our special board meeting. Yeah, we said it. I'm curious. Special board meeting. Okay. And I do apologize. I have to try to understand. <laughs> no, no, I don't mind that you're not waiting. Okay. Yes. Uh, I do have a concern. Um, my concern is okay, say we pay to use these bills, right? And we have other people out there on the field, using the fields, the public's, you know, communities using the fields. Is there, 
is there anything that can be you know can be done about that or what can be done about that well, we discussed as far as you will have the field reserved so if mm -hmm. it's where you show up and somebody else is on the field you'll have a permit they're gone okay um, and we still need to follow up on the process but that will be you'd be able to call the sheriff and have them come out it's a valid contract we, we've handled that in the past but i just want to make sure that we have something in process in which we can you know because it it became into an argument no, we'll have, they'll be so hopefully we have a piece of paper saying, Absolutely. hey, this is ours, sorry guys. Yes, it, it, hence the, the, you know, doing the process up okay. front, paying your fees up front so you get a permit. That's good here. Um, and then the other the piece is if there's others that are using the fields that haven't reserved and haven't paid, um, if I had an organization that was paying a fee and I saw an organization that wasn't, boy, I'd want to get their information and report to this committee so we could contact them and let them know okay. you're trespassing. We don't have the resources to police it off school hours, but that'd be a fee you'd have to pay. I mean, if we're going to have to have someone there to monitor it, that just increases exactly. the cost. So. But I also I think there's an important distinction to draw, though, between what I think you're talking about in a mom and a dad walking through the field to get to a park or flying kites in a corner. Oh, that's you know, we're talking about an organized group of people saying it's their field. You know, we can't. The, the shared use agreement doesn't allow us to lock the gates. We're not supposed to be doing that mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But by the same token, yeah, if, if another sports team is trying to play soccer in your football field, that's, that's the whole point of this is to give you the power to say, and I need to double check in case it's changed, but my understanding is that's the same process that the CST uses on their, if you're going to reserve the park or a table or things like that, it's the same kind of process. They, post, they actually post something over at the park when you reserve tables and stuff. So. Uh, okay, so if there's no other comments, a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourn. Aye. Six, seven, fourteen.